Well, hi, kids. <laughs> that last video took so long, I had to get a fresh cup of coffee. So it's nice and hot. Mm. Ooh. I think I just burned my, my throat. But it was good. It was worth it. Anyway, I'm going to talk about some normal distributions. Now, for some of you, since you're so abnormal, yeah, you know who I'm talking about. This might be a tough, tough subject to talk about. But for most of us, it's okay. Normal distribution curve. Not everything in the world is normally distributed. Sometimes things are what we call skewed. For example, if you're skewed to the left, that means the small tail's down here, bulk of data's here. Sometimes you're skewed to the right. I hope I got that right. I think it's right. I think the skew, the weird part, the weird part goes to the right, and the bulk of the data is to the left. But if things are normally distributed, then you would have your mean or your X bar in the middle. We've talked about this already. And then out one standard deviation plus one sigma max minus one sigma max. We would expect to find a, a large portion. You'll notice that the area under this part of the curve is huge. Whereas as you get closer to the tails, down in here in this area, things get much smaller. Well, what you need to know is the area under this curve adds up to 100%. And that would make sense. That's everybody. What percentile lies within one standard deviation? Well, if this is my one standard deviation, let me highlight this. So I'm talking about all of this. This is all of this stuff right here is within one. I can't color. Oops, I went out the lines. See, I can't color. I can never stay within the lines. I'm terrible. All of this is within one standard deviation. Well, if I add these numbers up, what numbers am I talking about? I'm talking about 15%, 19.2, 19.1, 19 19.1, 15%. If I add those up, and if I add all that up, that's within one standard deviation, I'm at 68.2. Now, I'm always forgetting the next one. So I'm going to take those, clear, 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 clear. Let me get, I hate when I have a messy screen. So that was 19.1 times 2, there was 2 of those, plus, I think it was 15, right, plus 30. There's your 68.2. That's within one standard deviation. Now, for the next group, I have to add in, for the next standard deviation, all of this. So I'm going to add in two 9.2s and two 4.4s. So 18.4, that's the two 9.2s, plus 8.8, .8, that's the two 4.4s, plus what I had before, 95.4. So now I'm at 95.4. And what lies within three standard deviations, now I'm going out even further, three standard deviations, that's all of this. Not that point 0.1, and not that point 0.1 there. So I'm going to add in 1.7 and 1.7 and 0.5 and 0.5. So I come back over here and I'm just going to hit plus uh, 1.7 times 2 is 3.4 plus 0.5 and 0.5 is just another 1. We'll add that on and we get 99.8. So if data is normally distributed, these are key numbers that you're probably going to become very familiar with. Within one standard deviation, you'll find the bulk, the majority of people. Within two standard deviations, you'll find almost everybody. And then you get out a little bit further, closer to three standard deviations, and now we're talking and we're close to, and they're not exactly, but they could be, they could be outliers. So let's talk about this. If the mean height of a sample of a population is 138 centimeters, that's important, so that's our mean. And our standard population standard deviations, population because it's sigma, is normally distributed. This is important that it says normally distributed. Otherwise, you can't draw the normal curve and use it. Then find the heights of exactly one standard deviation above and below. So here's our expected value. It's 138. So if I go one standard deviation above, we're going to add 5. That's 142, and we're going to subtract 5. 
That's 133. So find the heights exactly one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below. That will be 133 and 142. Find the heights exactly two standard deviations. So 138, we're going to go out 5 and another 5. Or we're going to go up 10. This is 138. To get to 148. Uh, this should be 143. Sorry about that, kids. Some seriously awful math there. Can't even add 5. 148. And then we're going to subtract. So 143. <whistles> subtract 5. And then we're going to subtract off another 5. And we should get to 128. I think I subtracted 5, right? So in this case, that would be from 128 to 148. That's, those are the two numbers. Two standard deviations above, two standard deviations below. What is the standard uh, what's the standard deviation and mean for the following diagram? Well, okay. Now, so what I did was we went one standard deviation to the left and we went one standard deviation to the right. So this distance here should be the same as this distance here. Or in other words, this is right in the middle or the average of those two. So if I take 40 and I add 12, I get 52. What would be right smack dab in the middle? We divide by 2 and you get 26. So my x bar is 26. Well, if that's true, then isn't that 14 up and 14 down? How'd I get the 14? I just took 40 and subtracted 26. So my x bar is 26 and my standard deviation. It's 14. On a standardized test, the mean was 82 and the standard deviation was 6. It says complete the curve for three standard deviations. So what we're going to do is we're going to sketch a normal distribution curve. Note, make sure you have tails down here and it goes up rather steep. Should be symmetrical as best as possible, although my drawings are horrible. <laughs> And then I'll grab a different color. Now, right here should be the X bar or the mean. X bar, which is 82. So I'm going to go to the right. One standard deviation to the right. I'm going to add 6, if I can do it right. 88. And then I'm going to add another 6. I'm going to go out another standard deviation. Add another 6. I'm at... 94, but I want to do three standard deviations, so the next one would be 100. And then if I go a one standard deviation below here, I'd be subtracting 6, or I'd get 76. Subtract another 6, I get 70. And subtract another 6, and I get 64. So, one standard, three standard deviations up, three standard deviations down. That's it. That's all she wrote for that. On a standardized test, the mean is 73 and the standard deviation is 7. The data is normally distributed. 73, standard deviation 7. It's normally distributed. It says, what percent of all scores fall between 66 and 80? All right, so we got some work to do. Let's get a quick sketch of what's going on. I'm going to draw a quick sketch. My mean is 77, or my expected value is 77, excuse me, 73. And my standard deviation is 77, so I'm going to go up 7. That would give me 80. But that's good. That's what I want. And I'm going to go down 7 down 7. That gives me 66. So really what I've done is I've gone one standard deviation down and I've gone one standard deviation up. So what I want to come back up here, if I haven't memorized it yet, I'm going to come back up here. I'll clean this chart off. Let me clean this chart off for us. So one standard deviation up, I'm going to add these two numbers. That's one standard deviation this way. If I go one standard deviation this way, I'm going to add these two numbers. 
Well, if you go, remember correctly, if we add, if we go up one standard deviation above and below, that's 68.2%. So if I come back here, one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below, I'm going to say that's 68.2%. Now there's a second half of this question that says, okay, 1,000 students took this test. How many scores would be between 73 and 80. Now, it says how many scored between 73 and 80. Does this mean exactly whatever I come up with is exactly? No. It's what I would expect to happen because the data is normal. It may not be exact, but it's going to be really, really close. So what I'll do is I'll take the 1,000 and I'll multiply by 68.2%. Well, that's 0.682. That's what it is as a percent. And if I multiply those two, I get 682 students. So I would expect around 682 students. It might be 681. It might be 680. It might be 683. But it's going to be really close to 600. I would expect around 680 students to be within one standard deviation of the mean, of the expected value. All right, so here it says, if 95% of scores are normally distributed of a normally distributed test fall between 75% and 91%, what is the standard deviation? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to find the standard deviation and the mean, because you have to find the mean, really, in order to find the standard deviation. So, let's remind ourselves, if this is the mean, and yes, that's a terrible curve, I get it. I don't know what X bar is yet. Now, 95%, do you remember from back up on top? 95%, approximately 95% are within two standard deviations from the mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go two standard deviations. One, two, that's 75. One, two, that's 91. Now, I need to average those to see what the mean is, the averages, the expected value. So I'll take 91, I'll add 75, I get 166, divide that by 2, and I get 83. So my average is 83. That's my mean. So here's the next thing I want to do. In order to find this value, it's just right in between these two. So what I want to do is I want to average... 91 and 83. So I'll take 91, I'll add 83, and I get 4, 174. If I divide that by 2, I get 87, 87. Now let's see if I got that right. Let's see if that makes sense. If that makes sense, this should be the same as this. Okay, let's see. This goes up 4. And then this goes up four. So good. So now I've already now I've figured out what my standard deviation is. My standard deviation is four. Let's check to make sure that works this way. If I subtract four, wouldn't that give me 79? And then if I subtract four again, that would give me 75. So the answer is the standard deviation is four. Perfect. Nice. That was easy. So for the following set of data. What is the mean standard deviation? Okay, so first thing we're going to do is get to our calculator. I probably got a bunch of crap in my calculator from earlier today. I know it's 6.45 and you think, how can you have earlier today? I've already created an hour-long video. This is my second video. Oh, yeah, I'm having fun. Need more coffee. Ah, that's hot. Ooh, I love it. All right, let me get these numbers in. Wow, we're almost done. This is going to be a short video. Oh, no, we're not. we got two more pages. <laughs> I lied! Mm. Sucker. 34. Oh, what are these things? We don't know what they are. If we don't know what they are, we'll just call them numbers. Why not? You can use that if you like. Uh, 34, 56. 34, 56. 56. 59. 60. Ah, not 50. 67. And 70. <laughs> Come back up. Boom. There it is. We hit menu, stats, stat calculations, one variable statistics, one list. What do we call it? Creative name of numbers. Click OK. 
Boom. There we go. Now we got all the information we want. We got our mean. Did it say to round? Darn, it didn't say to round. We're going to round because those are those are numbers. We're going to round to the nearest tenths place. So 57.42. So 57.4. Standard deviation. We're going to use population because it didn't tell us it was a sample. Is 10.8. 10.8. How many of these scores fall within one standard deviation of the mean? So let me come over here and I'll draw my picture. Oh yeah, I'm having fun. So 57.4, one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below. Since I'm tired, I'm going to use my calculator. So 57.4. Minus 10.8 equals 46.6. So 46.6. And if I add 10.8, now I'm being lazy. I don't know what takes longer, to do all this or just to kind of type it in. 68.2. All right. How many of these scores fall within one standard deviation? So let me go through and highlight all the ones. 34. Nope. 56, yep, 56, yep, 59, yep, 60, yep, 67, yep, 70, no. So the answer is 4. Oh. <laughs> 5, because I can't count. What is the probability of a score falling within one standard deviation of the mean? Well, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 5 out of 7 scored within one standard deviation of the mean. So I got to figure out what that is as a decimal. So I go over my calculator. Oops, go over my calculator. I'm going to do 5 divided by 7. 71.4. So 71.4. So the question here is, is this normal? It never said it was normal. It just gave us data, and we assumed it was normal. But this is really close to 68.2. So because it's so close, I would say yes. It's it is approximately normal. I know I didn't spell that right. I forgot the name. Normal. All right, here we go. A normal distribution curve of 33 and a standard deviation of 4. Find the probability randomly selected x value of the distribution is given interval. So what we really need is a good picture of what's going on here. So I'm going to do that above. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. I'm going to draw a good picture of this because we're going to use it for all of these. No, actually, we'll do it right here. We'll do it in each one. So let me draw it. I'm going to do it once, and then I'm going to copy it over and put it into all of them. If you want to fast forward after I do this, So 30, so 33 and 4. So 33, actually, that's not what I'm going to do. 33, I'm going to go up 4, 37, and I'm going to go down 4, 29. So it says, what percent of all values will be given in, in oh, no, 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 no. find the probability that a, so probability is the same as percentage. It's the same as percentage. So there's a, in this case, in between one standard deviation is 68.2 percent. That's the probability, 68.2 percent. That's the probability of getting it in between there. Now we want to do between 33, so that was the easy one. Now we want to do between 33 and 45. So here's 33. Notice I'm not going to the left at all. I want to start, 33 is my mean. 33. If I go up one standard deviation, that's 37, right? If I go up two standard deviations, that's 41. If I go up three standard deviations, that's 45. Now, it's three standard deviations to the right. So that's what I want to do. We're going to collect the data for three standard deviations to the right. So when I go up here, uh, let me get rid of this. Really, oh, try to hit the eraser. All I'm going to add up is three standard deviations to the right. So all of these numbers to the right get added up. Now, we don't go to point 0.1 because that's past three standard deviations. So 19.1, so 
15.1 plus 15 plus, was it 8.8? 9.2 and then 4.4. 9.2 plus 4.4 plus 1.7 plus 0.5. Enter, 49.9. So go down here. Now, some of you are sitting there going, what a stupid teacher you have. You didn't even know that was 49.9%. So let me tell you this. I'm not that stupid. I added all those up. Now, let's think about this. From here all the way over forever and ever and ever, that would be 50%, correct? Now, if I go back up here and I say, okay, if I go all the way over from here, all the way over, that would be 50%. Could I have just taken that 0.1 and subtracted off the 0.1 there? Because the 0.1 is the part past three standard deviations, right? So, therefore, I could have just taken the 50, subtracted off that little piece, and what remains would have been all of these numbers. That would have been a little bit easier. Oops. Scroll down. So, let's do this one. Between 21.4, or 21 and 41, 33, 27, 23, 19. Uh, that's weird. What's going on here? What's going on here? 17 is right in the middle of those two, huh? Hmm, Let's, we'll talk about that. Let's go up. 37, 41. So what are we doing here? We're going up one standard deviation. One standard deviation. We go. So we're going up two. We're going down one. Down two. And now down another one. And then this is down one half a standard deviation. So let's go back up. We're going to go two to the right and two and a half to the left. So erase all this. So let's see. We're going to go two to the right. One, two. So there's two standard deviations to the right. And then two and a half to the left. I'll do those in green. One. That's one standard deviation. There's two and a half. Now, I could add up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine items. Or if I wanted to, since I know all of it adds up to 100%, I could just take 100% and subtract off this, which is 0.6, and subtract off this, which is 2.3, which is really I'm be subtracting off 2.9 from 100. So 100 minus 2.9 is 97.1. So I don't want to do that. I'll just do that in my head. You could have used your calculator, 97.1. At least 25. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. That's a little weird. So let's draw this. So here is 33. I haven't gotten a 25 yet. This is a... 29 and this is a 25. Did I just screw that up? That's 33, 29, 25, 29. Oh, I screwed this one up over here. Gosh, blessed guys, I'm sorry. I have to put a note in that one. Let's go back over to this one. I hate doing things twice. Oh God, where did my pen go? Let's go back to this one. I kind of screwed up, I think. I don't know. I'm having a hard time adding today. It's like the second time I've had a problem adding. I think maybe, oh my gosh, it's sort of embarrassing. I'm going to blame my coffee or lack thereof. So this is 33. This is 29, and this is 25, and this is, not showing up, 21. 
And I think to the right I did okay, 37 and 41. So I'm really going down three standard deviations, minus three. I didn't, I, I, I didn't think I'd gotten to half standard deviations on that problem yet. And I'm going, or yet today at all, and I'm going two up. So three down and two up. Well, three down and two up is everything but, we're going to include this 0.5 now. So three down and two up. So then my answer actually should be, I should have added this 0.5 back in here. So 97 point, so really I'm not subtracting off all of this. I'm going to subtract off this 0.6 and off to the right, I'm only going to subtract off 0.1. So I'm subtracting off 0.7. So that would actually, so I'm going to subtract off 0.7. So that would actually be, uh, all right, let me erase. Make sure I do this the right way. I'm going to do it the right way. I'm going to subtract off all these, which is 2.3. And I'm going to subtract off, not this anymore, just the 0.1, uh, another 0.1. So that's 2.4. So I'm really subtracting off 2.4. So that should be 97.6. So that should be my answer for there. Now, I apologize for that. I, I don't know where my adding and subtracting went. 97.6, I think it was. So, at least 25. So here's 25. So if I'm at least 25, that's everything this way. So if I add all those up, and I'll speed this up. I'll try not to do this the wrong way. Add all these up. Get rid of my mess. So if you think about it, we're going to add all these up. We want two standard deviations to the left. We're going to add all of these get added up. That's the time consuming. I'm going to say, why don't we just get rid of 2.3. And then whatever's left over would be all these added up. So that would be, what is that, 97.7. So 97.7. All right, at least 29. Okay, so 29. This is 33. Let's see if I can do this again. Here's 29. So at least 29. That means here and up or not here. You can do it either way. So on this one, I can add up either. So we went 29. So that's one standard deviation to the left. I can either add up all these, which is okay. That's not a problem. Or I could just take 100 and subtract off whatever this is. So it doesn't matter. I'll do the 100 minus. 100 minus 9.2 minus 4.4 minus 1.7 minus 0.5 minus 0.1, 84.1. So that's that answer, 84.1%. And then at most 37. So let's see what I got for at most 37. At most that's terrible. So this is 33, and here is 37. That's one standard deviation above. So in this case, I'm talking about all of this stuff down here or not up there. Well, that's, these two things are basically the same thing. This one's saying above, one standard deviation below and above. This one stays one standard deviation above and below. They're the exact same thing. This is going to still be 84.1. All right, done with that. Woo, that was kind of time consuming. I might have to switch that out. Let's play around with that a little bit. What happened to my mouse pointer? Oh, here we go again. We're going to start doing crazy stuff. A normal distribution has a mean of 84 and a standard deviation of 5. So let's draw it up. Just to get one. I'm just going to do one. 84. We're going up 5. Let's see if I can add 89. Let's see if I can subtract 79. Good. What is the probability that a randomly selected x value has a distribution between 74 and 94? Okay. So if I go up one more standard deviation here, 89 plus 5 is 94. And if I go down one more standard deviation, that's 74. So really what we're talking about is plus 2 up 
and minus two down. So that's down and up two standard deviations. And if you go to the top, right up here, we said if you're within one or two standard, if you're within two standard deviations, it's 95.4%. So 95.4%. A normal distribution has a mean of 51 and a standard deviation of three. So this would be 54 and this would be 47, 48, gotta love my math. What is it at most 48? So I want at most it can be is 48. Well, here's 48 right here. That's the highest it can be. That means I only want below there. 48 and below. So I'm going to come out one standard deviation and add up all the numbers to the left. So I come back up here and I say, okay, I want to add up all of these numbers. 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1.7, 0 0.4, 4.4, and 9.2. So come over to my calculator. I got 9.2 plus 4.4 plus 1.7 plus 0.5 plus 0.1. 15.9%. What is the probability? Probability is, oh, I can do it. 15.9%. Okay, what do we got? Two left? Three left. All right, on a standardized test score, let me try if I can make this neater. On a standardized test score, 75% falls exactly 2.5 standard deviations below the mean. Now we're getting tricky. 2.5 standard deviations below the mean. 1, 2, 3, and then I'll put the 0.5 in a different color. So this is, okay, I won't. So this is minus 1 standard deviation, this is minus 2 standard deviation, and this is minus 3 standard deviations. If the standard deviation for the test is 4, what is the mean score? So this is 4, minus 4. This is 4, minus 4. And this is 4, minus 4. But I don't want to go out there. I only want to stop here. So that's really just a minus 2. Now, we said this was 75, correct? So I went down 4, down 4, down 2. So to get back to the mean, which is right there, I'm going to add all that stuff back. And so that's 10. So that means my average would be 85. All right, we're going two left. Light bulbs, light bulb lifetime is normally distributed. Normally, saying that normally distributed is, is, is really important. The mean lifetime is 750 days with a standard deviation of 40. I'll just do the first one, 710, if I can do it correctly, and 790. Approximately what percent of light bulbs have a lifetime greater than 790? Well, this is one. This is up one, and I want greater than 90. So from here up, so I've got to add all of these numbers here up. Let me erase some things. Now, didn't I already do that? I want to add up all these numbers. One standard deviation and above. Well, isn't that the same as this thing I did earlier? It's the same number. It's just above, but it's the same percentage. It's the same numbers we're adding. So that was the same as the one that went one below. And that was, I believe, 15.9%. So we'll have the same answer in yellow, 15.9%. Yay, one left. All right, so on a standard average test, normal distribution, the mean is 92%. 92%. And a standard deviation is three. Let me do one. What? 95, that must be a heck of an easy test, man. What, 89? Up three, down three, right? 89%. How many of them are 
Uh, if 40 students take the test, how many of them are expected to score between 89 and 95? Well, 89 and 95 is all of this, one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below. And if you remember correctly, if we go back up to that chart, this right here is 68.2%. So I had 40 students take the test. And I'm going to multiply by 0.682. That's 68.2%. Well, I go to my calculator. I do 40 times 0.682. Enter. 27.28. So, I don't even, on one note. So, 27.28. Now, do you really think that's the answer? Because I know we got some short kids in my classes, but I don't think I have anybody 0.28 short. So my actual answer should be 27 students. Yay! We're done, baby. Woo! That's not bad, right? Adding, subtracting, adding some percentages. Hey, it's not logarithmics. It's not inverse trig functions of the variables of the upside down reciprocal of the cosecant cotangent with the, the, the proof thing, right? Whatever that stuff was. It's just simple. You can handle this. We're in the money. We're in the money. We're almost done. Stay positive. Stay working hard. We're almost finished, kids. You guys are working hard, man. I want you guys to kick some serious kapute on this test. All right? All right. Take care. Peace out. See you later. Oops. That's the wrong thing. Uh.